Data breaches are more common than ever. Just last month, customer data, including sensitive information from 70 million accounts, was leaked online due to a data breach dating back to 2021. With an ever-increasing risk and presence of cyber attacks, protecting consumers' personal and financial data is more important now than ever. Fortunately, credit unions are helping to protect Americans' financial data. Jim Nussel, president and CEO of America's Credit Unions, joins us with more. Good morning, Jim. How are you? Good morning, James. I'm doing well. Thank you. So, so how a big problem is, how big of a problem is credit card fraud in our country? You know, I'm sad to say that credit card fraud today is now a $14 billion problem annually. It's doubled just in the last 10 years. We've seen so many data breaches. We've seen a lot of card fraud. I mean, there's just about six out of 10 people, which is quite a few people, uh, you know, have had some experience with this just in the last year. And it comes, obviously, many of us know we've had to call our credit union. We've had to call somebody and report fraud. We've seen some transaction on our statement. Something's happened or we've been contacted and told that our information has been breached. So it's touching a lot of people and it is big business and we need to put an end to it uh, with cybersecurity legislation uh, to protect our cards. Are there legislative threats to consumer data security that Americans should be aware of and what are the implications on that? Well, yeah, instead of worrying about data security and cybersecurity, Congress is worried about capping fees and all sorts of things, fees that are meant to protect our card system, that are there to ensure that we have a safe, uh, convenient system where the transactions are immediate, where we have a record of them at the end of the month, where you can where you can manage it, where the cards are are something that are issued to us from the credit unions, and the credit unions stand there protecting their members, using these resources to accomplish that. And there are people out there that are trying to make sure that some of the big box stores are getting you know an extra percent here or an extra percent there. And that's not the right way to do this. We need to protect cards and protect consumers first. Now, what can consumers take? What steps can consumers take to, to ensure their data is protected? Well, James, you know what this is. Some of them aren't a lot of fun, but, you know, just making sure you don't share your information with anybody. You can't trust anybody these days. So you protect your card, whether you carry it in your wallet or whether it's something that you put uh, in an app or on a website. Uh, second is make sure you don't share that with anybody and, and you're constantly changing passwords. That's a real hassle, I realize, but it's important to constantly be uh, churning through different passwords so that no one ever can predict what your passwords are and don't reuse them. And then third is at the end of the month, you're going to get a statement and you ought to look through that statement. I do it with my wife and we look through and we say, are these purchases that we made or these things that we actually bought? And if we see something, that's where we contact our credit union and say, hey, we've got a problem with something that we found on the statement. And that's why that fee is there so that the credit union can stand in and help you deal with that fraud you know, at a moment's notice. Now, where can our viewers go for more information? Well, probably the best place to go is a website called Protect interchange.com. That's protecting the interchange that makes sure that our payments are convenient and safe and that our data is protected. Protectinterchange.com is the best place to go for more information. Jim Nelson, thank you so much for joining us on Morning Blend. Hey, good morning, James. Thank you again.